All right, well, uh, welcome. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, being here, uh, spending uh, some time to uh, come learn about erectile dysfunction and learn about the different treatment options that are, that are available. So we'll kind of run through the, uh, the slide uh, deck. What is ED? So ED, this, is, this definition uh, was first came from the National Institutes of uh, Health, and basically it's the inability to keep and maintain an erection that's uh, normal um, for sexual intercourse, so for the patient to be satisfied um, having intercourse. Um, it's something that's very, very common. It's estimated that about 30 million American men um, have some type of ED, and it's a spectrum. It's not all of none, meaning you can have mild, moderate to severe, and so um, it's a spectrum of the condition, um, and I think that that's important to understand. <coughs> when we look at uh, reasons uh, for problems with erectile dysfunction, there are lots of reasons, but the bottom line, sort of the take-home message, is that typically there's a, there's a disease state or what we call organic, as opposed to in the mind. A lot of guys want to think that, okay, gosh, it's my mind that uh, is the problem that I can't get erections. But generally, it's, it's a reason, it's, it's a physical cause. And so you can see on here, uh, vascular, um, getting an erection is normal blood flow. So anything that's going to uh, cause uh, vascular disease, um, heart disease, uh, high blood pressure, that kind of stuff can affect it. Uh, diabetes, diabetes is very common here in uh, San Antonio. And diabetes is, is a disease of both blood vessels and nerves. And so that can cause uh, trouble. And then medicines, and obviously medicines can, can influence it a little bit. But I always tell patients, uh, you know, a lot of patients are, they say, well, I, you know, I was fine, and then they put me on some medicine for my high blood pressure, and then I started having trouble with erections. Uh, it's important to be treated for high blood pressure, because as I tell patients, I mean, if you have a stroke, then it doesn't matter if you have an erection or not. And so uh, uh, I think it's important to take the medicines that your, your regular doctor has, uh, has uh, given you um, to treat the condition. And so that's important. So we look at a, a restoration or return of erectile function. Uh, there are a lot of different options uh, for patients that are out there, and so I think everybody's familiar with the pills or oral therapy. Uh, Viagra came out in uh, 1998, and so it's amazing what it's done, and it's also amazing what their lawyers have done because the patent is still protected, so there is no generic Viagra. None of these medicines are generic, and so, um, they're expensive. Um, I disagree with the slide a little bit. I mean, the oral medicines work probably in about 60, 65% of patients, as opposed to what they say on here, 70 to 80%. And really, a lot of it just depends on how bad the blood vessel disease is. So if somebody has diabetes and, and um, high blood pressure, heart disease, treated for high cholesterol, the chances of the medicine <coughs> falls off. Maybe it only works about 20 or 30%. If somebody's been treated for prostate cancer, maybe that, you know, again, that number is less. And so it depends. There's not sort of one uniform uh, percentage of patients that respond to these medicines. A lot of it just depends on, on the, what medical condition that they have. <coughs> so the way that these medicines uh, uh, work is that the patient takes them. There are some instructions and, and also some precautions. Uh, the patient needs to have s stimulation, so you can't take it and then just sort of wait around and open erection comes up, you actually have to be stimulated. Uh, you take it a, a typically an hour or two before antis anticipated sexual activity, and then there's a window where the medicines work, and so you have to plan. Uh, Cialis, that window is a little bit longer, um, but in general you have to plan when you want to use it. Never take more than uh, uh, once a day, and again, some of the medicines can be affected by, uh, by food, and so particularly Viagra and uh, Levitra, food can, uh, can affect it. What are the side effects of the medicines? Well, they're all fairly common, um, but they're short-lived. And so you can have some headache, facial flushing, uh, maybe a stuffy nose, a little nasal congestion, that kind of stuff. The only contraindication, meaning who can't take these medicine, if the individual is on nitrates. And so nitrates is a heart medicine. And so really it's safe for any other medicine, blood pressure medicines, beta blockers, diabetes medicines, all that stuff. And so the medicines, and it's been studied because Viagra's been out since 1998, it's really been studied in every group and, and with all sorts of medicines. Some precautions, alpha blockers, those are medicines used to help guys uh, urinate a little bit better. So patients want to be on stable uh, uh, prostate medicine. 
Um, and then again, um, if there's some question about the heart condition of the patient, then the patient needs to talk to their, uh, their cardiologist and just sort of see if they're okay to be sexually active. And it's just like, you know, is, are they okay to exercise? So it's the same type of uh, question. And so these are the things, and that's why it's important that the individual um, uh, uh, see their physician um, to get prescribed the medicine so they can be counseled how to take it correctly and then also given the proper instructions, and so that's important. So what else is out there? Um, and then let me say the pills average $20, $25 for one pill, um, and so just as your baseline. So what else is out there? Well, the other, uh, some other options are the vacuum erection device. Uh, one of my patients, uh, his wife refers to this as a mood killer. It's a very cumbersome, bulky uh, device, and you can see on here, uh, there's a vacuum, it's a cylinder that goes over the penis, and then the vacuum draws blood into the penis, and then when the penis is full, there's a little constricted band that's uh, placed around the penis. And so um, it does take some time to kind of set up, and, and you can see the side effects listed here. It can cause some bruising, maybe some discomfort. Um, the erection also isn't warm, and so some of the women uh, don't like that. And so, uh, but nonetheless, it's out there, and you know, I put all these things uh, on here, not to tell you which one is better, but just so you, you know that there are choices. So for some people, the vacuum erection devices, they like it, well, that's great. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. And some people, the pills work and they like it, well, that's great too. So, but I think it's important to know what's out there and, and um, uh, just so you're educated. Another uh, uh, um, treatment option is uh, is a suppository, and basically what that is, it's a little pellet. It's about the size of a grain of rice that goes inside the urine channel. And uh, MU stands for um, this medicated urethral suppository for erection. But another patient, you know, I learn all these things from patients because MU doesn't work that, that well. And he says that MU stands for maybe you will see an erection. Um, <laughs> it only works in about 40% of patients, and it's expensive. It's about $30 for one little pellet one treatment. So uh, no needles are needed, you get an erection 10 to 15 minutes, you got to refrigerate it, but again, um, it's expensive and doesn't have a great efficacy rate, um, only in about 30 or 40 percent of patients. These are some of the side effects, and really the, the big one is probably urethral burning and irritation, so just like if you've gotten soap inside your urethra or the urine channel, that's, you know, maybe that's what it, it feels like. Um, uh, and so, uh, Nonetheless, uh, so for some people, uh, uh, Muse is uh, uh, what they prefer. Uh, we don't write a lot of prescriptions for Muse, to be quite honest. Uh, there are some patients that have tried it and like it, and so I'll refill it. But as far as you know, starting out with uh, uh, therapy, um, uh, it's really not a great option uh, for uh, patients. Also, we have here injection therapy, and, and um, so Cavergette is, uh, as listed on here, is a widely used agent. There's other types of uh, injection therapy that we use. Uh, there's uh, stuff that we get from a compounding pharmacy that we teach patients. And so, you know, when you see uh, some of the advertisements in the newspaper, the Men's Solution, that kind of stuff, they guarantee an erection. They pretty much put everybody on injection therapy, so they're not going to try different treatment options, we're not going to try, okay, well, let's try the pills, and if that doesn't work, then, you know, we can try injections, and if that doesn't work, then we can try something else. But there, there's just basically one answer, and so, uh, because they can sell that stuff to you, and uh, so they actually, uh, uh, I've heard that it's uh, pretty expensive for a vial. The injection therapy has been out, the concept has been out since uh, 1982 or so. And we have lots of patients on injection therapy, and there are patients that fail oral medicine, and we'll go ahead and put them on injection therapy. And so we do the teaching in our office. Um, it's, it's actually very cost effective. Now, we get our injection uh, medicine made generally at one of the local uh, compounding pharmacies, so it's only about 2 to $3 per erection. So it's just getting over the hurdle of putting a needle into the penis that guys have to get over. But um, the efficacy, effectiveness of injection, maybe about 80 percent. Remember where I said pills are about 65 percent, Muse is about 40 percent. So that kind of gives you an idea of, of, of where everything kind of fits in. But you can see on here, I mean, you got to put a needle in, you got to eject it right into the erectile tissue. You get an erection, it's about 10 minutes to get an erection. 
These are some of the side effects. You can get some scar tissue. Uh, it can be painful. If guys have been treated for prostate cancer, they always uh, complain of some discomfort when they use injection of therapy. And so, uh, um, so there are some issues uh, with it, but you know, all treatments are gonna have some side effects. I mean, that's just the way it is. So now penile implants. So what are penile implants? And um, I have a great slide that uh, kind of pokes fun of it, but we're not allowed to use it anymore. Uh, so anyway, uh, penile implants have actually been out for a long time, so since 1972. And uh, it was actually invented at Baylor. Uh, one of my professors, Brantley Scott, was the guy that, that came up with this, which is really pretty amazing. And he also came up with the artificial uh, sphincter. Um, and he was originally from San Antonio. I mean, there's a lot of Texas uh, roots to this. So, so the, the device has been out for over 40 years, which is amazing. And, and, um, and uh, so this slide needs to be uh, updated. Um, it is an operation, uh, but it's, you know, the surgery has evolved. So when I was a resident and learned how to do the surgery, it was a two, three hour operation, you know, for a first time patient. Patients were in the hospital for four or five days, and it was a big deal. Complications were greater. Now it's an outpatient operation. So today I did one artificial urinary sphincter and then three penile implants. And so on the virgin patients, meaning who have not had surgery before, it's 30 minutes. They go home the same day, and so big difference um, from, from years ago. Excellent patient partner uh, satisfaction, lots of studies. We've done a bunch of studies ourselves, and, um, and it does demonstrate uh, that. These are, uh, when you look at uh, patient uh, satisfaction, uh, now this is actually a two-piece device, but again, at the end of the day, it's the same concept. Patients and partners are happy with this, and, and you know, there's a lot of positives to it. Um, King will get up here and kind of give you his uh, feeling about it, but you know the spontaneity of it, uh, and again, they're they're fairly uh, durable uh, uh, devices. Um, now, some people think that there's something hanging out the body that people can tell that you have an implant inside you. That's quite the contrary. I mean, nobody knows. Um, you can't tell. I mean, even looking at somebody when it's deflated, the type of device that I tend to put in if the individual has good use of their hands is called the inflatable device. And so that's the device where there's a, a pump in the scrotum. And um, on here, you know, just kind of backing up, <coughs> let me just go over the diagram. There's a little reservoir here that holds sterile saline um, inside the penis, uh, the erection chamber or the cylinder. And then down in the scrotum between the testicle is a pump. So everything is underneath the skin. There's a little incision, maybe about an inch or so and everything's put in through that. So the device is, you know, think of hydraulics. It's filled with water, and that's essentially um, uh, how it works uh, uh, with the device. And so as long as the individual has a uh, uh, good use of their hands, they're able to get the inflatable device. And when they want to use it, they inflate it. Um, it provides good rigidity. You can leave it up as long as they want. And when they're done, they let it down. You can use it, you know, five times a day. I mean, there's no limit uh, once the patient has a... Uh, healed up uh, for this. Um, and then again, as I said, when it's deflated, the cylinders are soft, it looks soft, and you can hardly tell that uh, anybody has anything inside of them. And there's different types of, uh, of uh, cylinders, and everyone asks, well, you know, is it, do you, how do you measure, and this and that. Well, everyone has a different size penis, of course, and so we measure. We put in what's appropriate for the individual, and, um, and so that's how that, that works. We keep all this stuff in the uh, in the hospital, so we have plenty of, uh, of uh, uh, choices for patients. So this is a long-term solution. So these devices, I tell patients that they're meant to last 15 to 20 years um, when we put them in. Um, uh, the companies that make them, they do provide the patient with a warranty, generally for the lifetime of the patient, and I always joke that it's just for uh, parts, it's not for labor. So. Um, but you can use it anytime you want, spontaneous, uh, again, um, and, and, and good uh, patient satisfaction. Doesn't affect uh, ejaculation or orgasm, really has no, uh, no uh, role uh, with that. That's separate. So risks, again, everything has risks. Just like the shots have risks, the pills have risks, everything has risks. Uh, and so it's important to understand. Probably the biggest thing that people are afraid of, infection. And so, you know, I think nowadays uh, some of the enhancements with the device, uh, they're coated with antibiotics. I think that was probably the best thing. That's, you know, been, I guess, about 10 years. 
and that's really decreasing the infection rate. So in a non-diabetic, the infection rate is less than 1%, which is, I think, amazing. I mean, that's less than hips and knees that, you know, the orthopedic uh, physicians uh, put in. So I think that right there is, is, uh, is fairly amazing. Um, it does, uh, uh, as it says on here, will make natural spontaneous erections uh, impossible. But, you know, patients always, they always question, well, if it doesn't work, can I go back to what I had? And I tell, I mean, what did you have before? I mean, the guys that are getting implants have ED, all right? So we're not putting implants in patients that, you know, they take Viagra, it works great, or they're happy on shots. I mean, they have erectile dysfunction, and, and generally they don't respond to any other treatment. So they're looking to be treated, and so that's why we put it in. Um, you can get some, uh, uh, some shortening with the device. Uh, a lot of it just depends on, again, everyone's penis is different, um, how elastic or stretchable the penis is. Uh, some patients will complain of some loss of length, some don't. And all that stuff is determined by physical exam. And there are things that we do before surgery to help stretch up the penis. Um, if that's a big concern of uh, patients. And again, this is where seeing somebody with some experience in this uh, um, uh, process can help you um, to get good satisfaction. Um, mechanical failures we talked about and then pain. But again, this goes back to, um, and the risks have to be put on here. I think it's important. If you look at patient satisfaction in excess of 90, 95%, and that's been over the years, and so that's not anything that's new that just kind of popped up, and that's, you know, various studies all over the U.S. and outside of the country um, that patients like it. So certainly if something had all these horrible risks, we wouldn't still be putting in uh, implants, and so uh, um, that's a, a possible thing. Uh, is it covered by insurance or Medicare? It actually is. Uh, Medicare covers it, at least for now, I, I joke, and, and uh, uh, but it is covered by Medicare, TRICARE. Really, most insurances uh, cover it. It's rare that insurances don't. Um, for those that are self-pay, it's expensive. So, you know, fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000, and I do have some patients that um, pay. Um, but in general, uh, most of the patients, the majority, overwhelming majority of patients, um, their insurance covers it, their Medicare and what have you uh, cover it. And so it is covered by insurance. And if there's a problem with the device, um, again, um, um, the insurance will cover for it to be fixed and corrected and this and that. Uh, obviously, the company doesn't guarantee insurance coverage, and that's something that the practice does. We have people, that's all they do. They figure out authorization and everything else and counsel the patient on what their piece, um, if they decide to get an implant, is going to be, you know, what, what their component is. So not every urologist is a prosthetic urologist. Um, uh, and, you know, as uh, Abby said, I mean, you know, I've been doing prosthetic urology really since I got out of training. So now we're coming up on 20 years, which is sort of a scary number. But, uh, uh, but I've been fortunate enough to do it. I really like it. And, and because I really like it I've, and have done a lot, I've gotten pretty accomplished out of, uh, at it. And so, and I think it's important to get good outcome to see somebody that's experienced in it because, you know, there are little nuances just with any surgery. Um, I don't do cancer robotic surgery. We have people here that do that stuff, and, and, uh, or we have people that take out kidneys. I mean, again, um, fortunately in our group we have all these specialists that can concentrate and focus. And so today, like I said, I mean, I did four prosthetic cases. I mean, that's a lot of cases uh, when you ask the, uh, the AMS people. I mean, that's, and that happens every week, um, Tuesday is my day, and so, I mean, we stay uh, fairly uh, busy. And so I, it's important to seek somebody with some experience uh, um, in this and uh, um, to get a good result. I think that that's key. So again, erectile dysfunction is very common, a lot of great treatment options. Um, penile implant is a solution, and especially if uh, you're non-responsive to the other therapies, uh, but get the partner involved, uh, no question about it, and, and feel free. We just opened up our men's health and wellness clinic. This is at the end of the parking lot, so I'm very excited about that. So it's an environment for men. Um, obviously, the wives can come with their husband. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, the way that the decor is set up, and once the patients get in the back, there's just guys taking care of them. And so it's a sensitive tub uh, subject, no question about it. And so we try and make the environment um, geared towards guys where they can feel comfortable talking to us and the people I work with, my team, 
Um, they've been with me, uh, Chris, now for a number of years, and so uh, um, does a great job. And so uh, I think that that's really part of it as well. I mean, the feedback that we get from patients.